The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> you think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Hey, well, I must have not been paying attention. I'm going to be merciful on the doctor today. Good. We're not going to make him do the Baba Buzz. No. Tom No Limit tries to make everyone sing along. All right. We're going to give you a break today. <laughs> it is catchy, though. It is. Once you've heard it a couple of times, you can't not sing it. What do you say we get this show on the road? All right, sure. All righty. Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, atop two guys, Smoke Shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. We've got a really interesting show. We've been promoting it for the last couple of weeks. We've got Dr. Gomer from MGS Dental in Tewksbury, but he's not really here to talk about like dental stuff. Dr. Gomer is from Ukraine, and he immigrated to this country from the Ukraine, and I thought with all the things going on, everything you see in the news, we all know 80% of what we hear and what we see in the news is total bullshit. And we don't know, is, is Russia really winning? That is, is Ukraine really holding them back? Is, uh, did, did Russia have any kind of real reason to go into Ukraine? What's really going on with this Ukraine thing? So I thought we'd come in and we'd ask Dr. Goma, because he's from Ukraine, he's got personal experience, and to me, I would put a lot more credibility in somebody who was actually there and knows people there and is familiar with the subject than the talking head idiots on Fox and CNN. So I thought we would do that. Before we do, I want to thank our sponsors. Let me pull my sponsor list up here. McLennan Real Estate, Century 21, sponsoring the program. They're right down on Broadway in Methuen. Lazy River Products in Drake It. And by the way, I haven't actually physically been there yet, but I've been sending friends. Because I have friends that live in Drake that come down to my area. And I've been, I've been trying their product for the last week or two. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. And actually, yeah. not only is the cannabis there good, but it is a lot cheaper than... Uh, a couple of the cannabis places that I visited in Haverhill. Wow. A couple of Haverhill places called and asked me to come down and take a look at what they were doing, but they didn't want to advertise. They, they, wanted, like a, they wanted a free story. Right. right. I mean, these cannabis places are making so much money, it's ridiculous, and they wanted me to write like a free story, and I thought they wanted advertising. So I went down, looked at the place, talked to the owner, and then I was like, well, here's our ad rates. They were like, oh, yeah, we thought you were just going to kind of like write a story. And I'm like, no, that's called a free ad. Yeah. Right? Because we're a free newspaper. We survive on advertising. If I write a story about your business and you're not advertising, it's really just a free ad for your business. Um, so I, I send my friends to Lazy River Products. Prices are better. And so far, product is much better. Marseille and Sun Construction, it's right about time now. Winter's almost here. If you got that deck or that roof that you've been meaning to get fixed, do it now before the snow hits. Call Marsan and Sun Construction. EIS, Investigation and Gun Training. Borelli's Deli. Have you been to Borelli's Deli in Methuen? I don't think so. You, 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 it's worth the trip. At some point, when you're in the Methuen area, look up Borelli's Deli on Merrimack Street. Best, freshest meats anywhere. Um, Best sausage. I don't know if you're a sausage guy, but they make really hot sausages. Which oh, I, I like, really like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so go go see Don, my buddy Don Smirigli over at. Should uh, I say hello to him? Yes. Yeah. Go in right. and tell him that you're a friend of mine. He'll love ah. to hear that. Okay. Tomo and Shake and Seafood, best sushi place anywhere in the world. Tomo right here on Broadway in Salem. Uh, MGS Dental, which is a free ad for Dr. Gomer for his dental business. AFC Urgent Care. We just talked to Lisa Williams last night. And she has, we have an, an announcement, so remind me about the Lisa Williams thing because I don't want to I'm screw my announcement up. Pleasant Valley Landscaping, Dave Id Consoli is taking on new jobs, and he's also looking for help. 
So if you're looking for a good job and you want to work for a good guy, you should be talking to him. And a free shout out to my buddies at JG's Ice Cream. You know, they don't sponsor the show technically. I just like to give them free ads because I love their product and I love the guys that own it. The Jafrida brothers are great. Um, and every once in a while, because I do that for them, they just like randomly will send me a check and say, here, thanks for all the help that you're doing for us. And, and I love that more than anything in the world because I don't charge them and I don't want them to have to pay for their ad. But the fact that they're actually thankful, you know, there's so many times I've given people a free ad in the Valley Patriot and I don't even get a thank you or I give them a free shout out on the show and I don't even get a thank you. And not that I'm looking for a thank you, but it's kind of like, you know, when you do it and they don't seem appreciative, you don't really want to do it for them anymore. All right. But JG's Ice Cream is so appreciative that we give them free shout outs on the show that they do send us a small check once in a while. And I definitely appreciate that. Um, I have two things I want to get to before we talk to Dr. Gomer. We have an announcement. The big announcement. And I honestly, I didn't think we would have this announcement for another couple of months, but we have it now. Oh the 19th anniversary bash has been set for March 31st of next year. The 19th anniversary Valley Patriot bash. Last year, we gave out over $42,000 in scholarships. Every penny that was donated, we posted the person's name that donated it online, and we ran a running total online so that everybody that donated knows that 100% of what they gave went directly to the students. In fact, I even had one smarmy politician, I won't mention which Haverhill Mayor Jim Ferentini it was, but I had one politician say, I don't want to give this money because I'm afraid it might go to your newspaper, and I don't like you, and I don't like your newspaper. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, Mayor. If you're worried about that, we're giving out a scholarship to a kid from Haverhill High School. Why don't you just write the check directly to the kid? And he did. He wrote a check for $200 directly to the kid. So whether you like me or you like the paper, none of that money comes to me or the paper. It goes directly to the kid. So anybody that's thinking of, of donating this year, we'd love to raise more than 42. I don't know that we ever will because that's like double what we normally do. Um, but uh, if you're thinking of doing that and you don't like me, you don't like the paper, you can still help without helping me. You can write a check directly to the kid and we will be posting online once we choose who those kids are. And you can write a check to the kid, send it to us. And if you want to come to the bash and present your check to the kid, we'll let you do that too. Nice. So uh, March 31st, we've got that. Uh, New Hampshire elections are coming up. We're going to do a New Hampshire election show, I think, next week. Um, let's see. All right, I think that's it. So I'll get to the other stuff on another show. It's n nothing really, really uh, pressing. Sitting to my left, to your right, is my good friend and my dentist, one of my, I have three dentists, believe it or not, one of my dentists, um, uh, Dr. Gomer from MGS Dental. His website is mgs.dental. There's no .com on that. mgs.dental if you're looking for a good dentist. And if I trust him with my teeth, you should be trusting him with your teeth. But the reason why we have him here is not because he's a great dentist, but because Dr. Gomer, Dr. Mikhail Gomer is from Ukraine. He immigrated to the United States. And I thought maybe this would be a good way to like educate the public about what's really going on in Ukraine. And he agreed to come on. So thanks for coming, Doc. Thanks for having me. So w w when, how, how long did you live in Ukraine? How long were you there? Well, you almost half of my life. I, I've been 28 when I came. Oh, so you, so you came here at 28 years old. So you, yeah. you have like a whole almost half-life of experience. Yes, exactly, yes. In Ukraine, when this whole thing broke out, when Russia invaded Ukraine, did you see that? Did you, did you think that was going to happen? Did you ever think that would happen? I would never uh, thought about that. So, but um, um, I, call, I call there because I still have some friends, my classmates, in fact. And uh, well, I, even in the beginning of when it just started in February... So uh, the, my, I started conversations, uh, how are you and all, and uh, he said that this is no surprise. I mean, so they, we are at war for eight years already. So this is just an escalation. This is how that's supposed to end. So what happened in those eight years? What, what was going on between Ukraine and Russia in those eight years? At the eight years, I mean, so that was uh, just a propaganda. And uh, uh, lots of uh, brainwashing on the both sides, I believe. Mm -hmm. So Putin says, and I like to try and you know look at both sides. Putin says the president of Russia, he's not president, right? He's like prime minister or something. What is his official title? Like czar, Putin. What is what is his official title? Is he like president? Putin. I think he's a president. president. Yes. Yeah. So the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, claimed that the forces in Ukraine were white supremacist Nazis, 
And there is some evidence that there are some white supremacist Nazis, but there's white supremacist Nazis everywhere, right? Like, you can't get away from it. Right. Is, there any tr- is there any truth, though, to Putin's claim that he's coming into Ukraine because he's trying to get rid of white supremacy? No, that just... Uh that just his what he said. It, but um, uh, this is no such a thing um, over there, it, it, at least not on the national level. Um, well, uh, that's a, that's a start with uh, with the Crimea, and, and as I said, eight years ago. So when uh, the, the the first it was a uh, a peaceful referendum, uh, and then the Crimea become uh, Russian uh, territory. So well, I always uh, compare that is. As if, uh, well, we, we, we get a referendum somewhere in Texas and all of a sudden that's become Mexico. Right. I mean, say, how is that possible? Right. I mean, so this is a, a sovereign country. I mean, so this is a part of the country. All of a sudden, somebody just come uh, do this um, um, referendum. I mean, so who, who was voting there? So uh, how does that happen? So there was a referendum in certain parts of Ukraine uh, on their ballot to be part of Russia instead of being part of Ukraine. Correct. And that was being spurred by... Putin's people in Ukraine. No, no, of course. Putin's supporters yes. in Ukraine. Right? And then that was, at that time, that was no response. I mean, that was, uh, what, 2014, and that was no response from um, uh, from outside the Ukraine. Mm-hmm. So it, it just it just quietly become, uh, Crimea quietly become Russian. So, and uh, while well, they, they have some sanctions, but I mean, that, that was no... Um, no response from nowhere. So until until right now, when it's become obvious that uh, uh, this is like an open war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, and then if Russia don't, doesn't get stopped, I mean, so it's probably going to spread somewhere in the Eastern Europe, or and then who knows where. Why does Putin want Ukraine? What what is the real reason? If it's not white supremacy, if he's full of crap, which you know, most politicians are, no matter where they are, right? What, what, what is his real reason? What, why does he want Ukraine? What's, what's so important with all the other countries around him? Why Ukraine? Right. Well, um, it's hard for me to say why, but um, uh, I think uh, he, is, uh, he, he was um, uh, some kind of in the leadership of KGB back in the uh, um, 80s and 90s. And then um, he come from the uh, country that, that was the Soviet Union. So that was a big country. And uh, the... Everything that he promotes right now over there is like uh, we can do it again or whatever. To reconstitute uh, yeah. the Soviet so, Union. So they just um, done to reconstitute uh, the Soviet Union and then uh, with the, the seize more power. Mm-hmm. My so when Putin went into Crimea, Obama was president. Right. And Obama did nothing. And of course, we criticized Obama for doing nothing right. because... Putin went into a sovereign country and just took it over. And we sat back and did nothing. Now the opposite is happening. Now he's actually physically going into Ukraine. And our government is now saying, no, we've got to stop it. And we're sending billions of dollars. Is America helping or hurting in this, in this cause? Are we, are, we, are we actually helping in the cause? Or are we doing more damage than good with our good intentions? Right. Uh, the, the very controversial um, uh, question. That's why we have you here. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm not well, uh, I, um, I, I, you know, so there, there is a, a Russian community in uh, my area where I live, and then uh, we are um, a pretty g- big community that calls uh, an Dover outing. So it consists of about uh, 100 families. And then uh, at the gathering, so we discussed that, and um, well, some people saying that... Um, it's necessary. I mean, and then I'm one of them because I'm from Ukraine. I know I calling my home down, and I know how hard is that. And I know that uh, well, um, just adjacent um, um, small towns already got hit by uh, Russian pretty hard. All right. So, in my opinion, I mean, it's a good thing. Well, um, on the other hand, uh, well, there is the other opinion that. Uh, well, we have our own problems in here, so which we can deal with. Mm-hmm. We have to deal with, and then uh, sending more money uh, to Ukraine just uh, weaken us, and so we we cannot we cannot just go ahead and proceed with our uh, stuff. So, and uh, so well, this is this is this is true too. So, but I, you know, it's, it's hard it's hard to say what's uh, more appropriate at this point. 
Is <clears throat> is Ukraine as corrupt as the conservative media in America makes it out to be? Like, if you watch CNN, mm. Ukraine is the greatest country that ever lived, right? Mm. And then if you watch Fox, it's, no, they're a bunch of corrupt idiots who don't know what they're doing, and we shouldn't be involved. And I'm wondering if maybe there's a little bit of truth on both sides here, whether or not Ukraine – is Ukraine, Ukraine does really seem like a very corrupt country. Mm. Is, it as, is the government as corrupt as the conservative media paints it out to be? I mean, all the Eastern – Europe's country is kind of corrupted. I mean, so with I, all respect, I, I got the I, answer I, I, when he yeah. smiled before he answered the question. Yes, <laughs> uh, well, but uh, I I do have a great respect to uh, current uh, president of Ukraine, President Zelensky. Mm -hmm. So I, I think he's doing an amazing job really? on the holding off. I'm learning a lot today. Um, so when Zelensky became president of Ukraine, which was right before the takeover or right before the war started, he banned the opposing party, and deem them criminals. Can you talk about the difference between the freedoms that the people in Ukraine have versus the freedom in this country? Well, first of all, see, I uh, don't follow that uh, close to what happened where. I mean, I, I barely keep up with our politics mm -hmm. uh, over here. So... Um, how how Zelensky uh, become a president? I mean, so that that was, uh, I guess, uh, election, and then he, he get he get the position. Right, right. All right. So well, the funniest thing is that uh, well, he's an um, actor. I mean, and then uh, also he's a comedian, and then he has his own um, show. He he used to have it. I mean, it still exists. So there's a chance thing. for me then. What is that? There's a chance for me then. He had his own he, show. He became well, president. Exactly. No, There's absolutely. A chance for so, me. But it's not what I wanted to say. So it's just uh, well, not so long ago. Is it, I mean, not much before that he became a president. Well, they shoot the movie that calls uh, the uh, servant of the people, mm -hmm. and that uh, and then he was uh, the main character. He um, uh, played the president of Ukraine. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so that's very funny. And, Life and, imitating art. So, and then, and, and the, the you know, see, I just watched this movie just recently again. And, and what's then, the name of it? Uh, the Servant of the People. I'm going to have to watch that. Right. So, I'm not sure it's it's English subtitles, but uh, but it, it's a comedy. It's a farce. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's a lots of things that happening. Mm -hmm. But they talk about that. Right. All right so yeah. that's kind of strange. I don't know what that. Yeah. When I turn on <laughs> CNN every day, I see buildings in rubble, I see neighborhoods wiped out, and that kind of gives us the impression that that's what all of Ukraine is like right now. Is it just like in the, in the frontline areas where that devastation is? When you talk to your people back home, do they say, oh no, it's horrible everywhere? Or do they say, no, we, we don't even notice what's going on, on uh, up at the front, it does, it's not hitting us? Well, uh, my hometown is Dnipro. It used to be Dnipropetrovsk. So it's a relatively safe area. And then it's it's never been bombed that, um, you know, that much, even from the beginning of the war. But even so, uh, well, uh, this is, uh, see, well, th there is uh, uh, casualties over there. And then, you know, it's broken, burned buildings and all. So, but... Uh, well, I do have a friends from Kharkov, for example. But mm -hmm. this, you know, th that city was ruined and then uh, just leveled to the ground. I mean, so especially certain areas. So, well, this is this is no water now. I mean, so and then, uh, well, uh, no gas, I mean, so, or um, electricity. Mm -hmm. So, and then the big concern is I just talked to my friend from Dnipro, and it's a, it's a, that was my classmate, in fact. And then uh, he said that he just talked to these people. He's he working with uh, people from Kharkov who didn't even want to go anywhere, so, and then it's just stay home. So, it's, it's a winter coming, cold weather. And then, uh, but they all living in the multiple stories buildings. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the problem that they are facing right now is that when it's freeze up the whole thing, so there'd be no water, no electricity, and what no about, sewer, and everything. So that'd be that'd be tough. Right. What about energy? Where does Ukraine get most of their energy? Do they get it from Russia, or do they produce their own? Yeah, I can't answer oh, you that. Know, you something. don't know. You don't know. I figured because he's from Ukraine, he'd know some of the stuff, and it's whatever stuff he doesn't. Know. Well, it'd be like if I went to Germany, people started asking me stuff I didn't know, but some of some stuff I would, right? Um, so, 
when you when you reach back to the people at home in Ukraine and you talk to them, what is their mood? Do they think that Russia can be stopped, or, or are they uh, or are they fatalistic and they just think it's only a matter of time before Russia just takes over? No, they they not fatalistic at all. I really, mean, so they are, they are really fighters. Um, well, one of my classmates, in fact, uh, just uh, went went to the uh, uh, military. Um, he's not military, so but it, he he went. Uh, to the uh, well, what it calls uh, the the facility, and they they took him to the uh, front lines, and all. Uh, well, the other thing, so he didn't make any uh, um, shooting, and he got like a, a pneumonia in, in, in the first two weeks because they let them sleep on the ground. <laughs> so well, it's, it's, it's uh, rough conditions. It's a rough conditions. Well, yeah, so, but uh, but that's that tells us that they, they 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 want to fight, and they they do not want to. Um, we just surrender just for nothing. Mm-hmm. Before the Soviet Union, um, we heard a lot about Ukraine in World War II, right? right. Uh, World War II, Ukraine was kind of one of the front line areas. Before that, though, what what was Ukraine always an autonomous country, or was it part of something else way back when? I mean, for the history, I think that's a certain time uh, Ukraine uh, become an autonomous country, and this is the longest. Right. So uh, since uh, when? Since since Bogdan Khmelnytsky, which is uh, I'd say long time ago. Okay, all right. Okay, <laughs> decades maybe. No, hundreds. Oh, oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. So so at least for the last couple hundred years, Ukraine's been its own country. No, no, no. So it's uh, uh well, uh, it, Ukraine was um, uh independent country on the uh, I believe three occasions. Well, um, I might be mistaken. Maybe only two. So, but. Uh, First time, I mean, so it's, it, it was close together, and that was, uh, I believe, uh, well, 18th century okay. or 17th century. So, well, I, I say, and then uh, the, the third time is right now. So, what happened in between? They were in between. They were under Russia or under Poland. Oh, under Poland. So, yeah. at one point, Poland kind of owned the area that's now Ukraine, yeah. and then they seceded, became their own country, and then the Soviet Union came along after World War II, and they just gobbled you guys up. Yes, I, mean, I think it was after the uh, uh, revolution in, uh, in uh, 1917. So the part of the Ukraine just get um, um, in, into the um, uh, well, the new Russia, mm-hmm. it's a Soviet Union, and then that was uh, divided after Second World War. Right. What are the chances that with with America's failing leadership, and there's no question America's on the decline, at least right now, yeah. what are the chances that Putin gets what he wants? I mean, he got Crimea. He went into, what was the other country he went into? Uh, he went to Crimea, but he also tried to go into another country. And now he's trying with you guys. Is, is there a chance that Putin can get what he wants, like over time? In the next 10 years, he could reconstitute the Soviet Union? Well, Putin is not forever, but he's 70. I mean, right, so I, right. I hope not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, happens, what happens if Putin dies tomorrow do they do they start a new like some countries have to start a whole new government right in israel the prime minister steps down a new guy yeah. comes in and the whole government changes they have to have you know the the support of minor uh parties and all that what happens in russia if putin dies gets killed whatever happens does somebody else like him just take over and keep going, or does it reconstitute what's going on in, in that government? I really hope it's reconstituted. So, well, that's at least what happened in eight, 1985 in Soviet Union. So after Brezhnev died, and then Andropov died, and then uh, was that uh, Chernenko died, and then all of a sudden that was a Gorbachev. He right. still was from the system, but uh, he changed the whole thing. Right. And Gorbachev was the real hero in history. If, My opinion, if you're yes. Ukrainian, right? He just died uh, recently. Right, and didn't yeah. didn't they like kind of snub him in Russia when he died? Didn't Putin like not go to the funeral and stuff because he didn't like him? Did you see that? No, um, I thought I saw a report on mm-hmm. that. So, so Putin doesn't go anywhere pretty much. I mean, he sits and then uh, nobody can reach him because mm-hmm. he's afraid. I guess. So is Putin? Uh, Long before this happened, you and I had a conversation. I think I was having my teeth done. And I and you said you were from Ukraine, and I asked you what you thought of Putin. And you said to me very strongly, and I remember it, it was at least five years ago, you said, Putin is a killer and a war criminal. And I thought maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Because we in the United States don't think of him as a war criminal or, or, a, or a tyrant. 
Well, I, I always stop until recently. I thought I thought we are, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, the I'm not the, trying to get you killed. All I'm the sorry. Uh, well, um, all the, uh, the campaigns and the military campaigns. I mean, so well, it, it, they they looking for uh, they looking for expansion or just for the local war. I mean, so they get the, uh, what's the Karabakh and then uh, well uh, Grozny in Chechnya. I mean, Grozny was wiped out. I mean, so completely. And then, uh, well, the, what what they done in Crimea and then the Netsk Republic. I mean, so that's the uh, a little uh, that was the um, region um, in between, it's, it's close to the Russia. And then they they completely overtake it, and um, it's not a Russia, but it's not a Ukraine technically. So, right. so and uh, the, over the last eight years, I mean, they so just get escalated more and more and so now it's just uh, I guess it's it's a top top of the uh, uh, escalation so. the area that you grew up in is that under attack right now is that a safe area still it's a relatively safe area so but uh, it's it, it's still under attack that they have um, uh, every day there is up to 10 missiles coming and, wow yeah now, is your wife also Ukrainian? Yeah, we're from the same city. Oh, really? No yeah. kidding. Did you meet there or did you meet here? No, we meet and married there. Yeah. You met there? And yeah. then you got married and you came here or you came here and then you got married? No, we get married, get our daughter there, so, okay. and then uh, we come over here. So what year did you come to the United States? 99. So when you got to the United States in 1999, what was the difference in freedoms coming from the Ukraine coming here? Did you have more freedoms here or was it pretty much the same? Do you have the, in other words, do you have the right to free speech? Do you have a right to carry a weapon? Do you have a right to trial by jury over there? You know, presumed innocent, those kind of rights? Yeah. Or, or is it different? And if it's different, tell us how it's different. No, it's, uh, well, uh, it was different. So I, I, you know, technically speaking, I mean, so if we start talking about that, so, well, I came to different America. That's oh, it's true. A, oh, it's, uh, America is different right now from sure what is. I saw right there. The America was now a dream. dream. I mean, so we... Uh, well, being a Jewish over there, it's, it's hard. Yeah. And then uh, lots of Jews went to Israel because America stopped accepting refugees from the Soviet Union right after, I think, 87 or something. So, it, it, well, we, I get lucky. And, uh, uh, well, that was, yeah, I didn't even think that I could make it over here. So, mm -hmm. But I did. As I, it just was a, a dream dream of the life. So, well, uh, then... Uh, but the country changed. I mean, so. So did you have, did you have the same types of rights then, that yeah, you well, had here? Like, for, do you have a right in, in Ukraine? Could you, could you go to the town square and talk bad about the president without getting arrested? I don't think so. No. So you didn't really have the same types of rights. That's why you came here. Yes. And you didn't see a war coming. You just came because you wanted more Honestly, rights. Honestly, I, I had in a free country. I I couldn't even imagine war between uh, Russia and Ukraine. Right. So that was not even close. Talk about the changes you've seen in America. When you came here, you said, well, it was a free country. When you came here, it's kind of really heading in a different direction now, right? Right, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. And you see us heading more toward what, what's going on in, in Western Europe. Towards the left. Eastern Europe, yeah. yeah. Toward the left. Yeah. yeah. Big time. And if anything happens here, there's nowhere to escape. Like, you went okay. from Ukraine to here. We still have a moon. Yeah, we get it. Well, it's true, but China's going to the moon. They're going to be colonizing the moon now. Okay, so they, yeah, they, they've actually know. declared the moon their territory at this point. Is that point. right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. I, I think I start start learning Chinese. I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, we may ha we may have no choice given our current lack of leadership in, in the country. So, when you meet other Ukrainians here, um, do they gen do they generally be agree with you that the United States needs to go in and they need to stop Putin? And stand with the, or is or is there a is there a, a divide among it, among the American Ukrainians? I mean, there is a divide. Yeah, there is a divide, but majority still appreciate the help. Right. And right. then, so now you got a ballot question. We have a ballot question in Massachusetts. I'm just going to veer off the subject a little bit for right. a second. We have a um, a ballot question in Massachusetts for, and I and I put it on Facebook. I think it's question two, and it has to do with dentists. And it has to do with like some kind of insurance reimbursement. And I asked on Facebook if anybody could explain it to me. I got a hundred different answers. None of them. None of them agreed on what it said. It's very confusing. Are you for this ballot question? And can you just kind of explain to people at home what it does? 
Well, uh, the question too is the um, um, well. This is the uh, medical insurance uh, uh, ratio. So we'll, the only thing is it's a dental insurance um, um, loss ratio. So what that means is, um, so well, people are spending certain amount of money for premium, and then um, what happened, especially with dental, for somehow I don't know. But uh, people don't use it, so they don't go to dentists. I mean, so they pay the premium. I mean, and then they lose the premium because they don't go. So, well, now, I mean, I guess if you do not spend, well, something about the percentage, like 83%, they said, but if you don't spend a certain amount of money from your insurance, then you're entitled to get a refund of okay. a certain amount. So this is, this is something that... I, I would vote yes. So you'd vote yes because this is something that would... Because I ask politicians and I can't get a straight answer. No. So I figure I go right to a dentist because they're going to know whether it's their bottom line. So basically, this is for insurance reimbursement for the dentists, and you're losing money now if someone doesn't show up, if they make an appointment, oh, so this is That has nothing to do with the insurance reimbursements okay. for dentists. This is, this is the premium for people who are who patients. Oh, for the patients? Yes. So okay. this, is, this is the premium that uh, people pay for dental insurance. Okay. And then they, if they don't go and then don't spend that money, at the dental office, mm -hmm. so they still entitled to have a refund for not using or for for not spending the whole thing. Okay, so some people don't need to. So some people come and then they do two cleanings and they don't need all, all this money. So. Right, right. See, I have terrible teeth, as you know. Um, so as a as a as a consumer, I pay dental insurance. I go through Delta, Delta Dental, and if I don't go to the dentist, I get that money back. S certain amount. Yeah. Certain percentage out of that. I think you you have some refund. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we're we're yes on question two then. Yeah. yeah I guess so. we, we got that's it, pretty straightforward. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Why, why give the money to insurance companies? They make plenty, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you wish the American people knew about Ukraine that isn't being told by the media? Because the media. It's hopeless trying to get anything real out of the American media today. It's not like it was 20 years ago. So what I what I would like to say is, it's uh, um, uh, well before to get uh, to any uh, uh, new leftist law, but maybe it's a good idea to talk to the people who actually come from Soviet Union, or read this history uh, how how that started and how that ends in that right. country, and avoid by all means. To what happened there in Russia? Moving to the left. Yes. Yeah. All right. We get Dr. Gomer. Appreciate him being here. Um, why don't you tell people your website? How they can get in touch with you if they need a. You're in Tuxbury. Um, how can people get in touch with you if they need their teeth cleaned? If they need something pulled? If they need a cavity done? We want to get you as much business as we can because you're our friend. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, uh, our office is very easy to find. It's uh, on the main street in Tewksbury, right across the street from the post office. I found it without GPS, so that make, that means oh, it really so that's, is easy. That's, I, that's I make it super easy. If yeah. you have a GPS, you, you just get there. There's no problem. But if you still get lost, uh, it's, it's a 978-851-7012. And what do you specialize in? Do you have anything specialized? Do you like those Invisalign stuff, or do you have any specialty that you do? It, it's it's a two doctor's uh, uh, clinic, so it's, it's me and my, my wife uh, and um, – it's, uh, we pretty much do the whole thing, uh, well, the whole range of dental uh, services. Uh, we do specialize in implants and then uh, some aesthetics. Uh, that's more for my wife, of course. Right. All right. So, but um, uh, but pretty much we um, do all the services inside. And one of the other things that I love about Dr. Goma, you know, he's not even from this country, but he comes to this country. He starts his own business. He's an entrepreneur. And then at Hanukkah time in December, I always get a phone call from Dr. Gomer, who says, we're lighting the menorah in Tewksbury Square. I sponsored the menorah this year. We'd like you to come. And I think, wow, we've got so many Americans who were born in this country who don't go out and help their community in ways like that. And here's a guy from somewhere else appreciating the freedoms that we have in this country to go put a menorah in the middle of a town square, and he sponsors it. And though, to me, those are like community heroes. People like you are community heroes. Because you're out there doing things for other people. You're not out there doing something for yourself. There's no big sign that says M MGS Dental on it. Right? You're not doing it for yourself. You're just doing it to help the community. And I appreciate that 
because there's so many people who could be doing those things that are from this country that are so much better off than you and I, and they don't do it. So the fact that you do it, I appreciate that a lot. Well, thank you, sir. But I, it, that was the honor to um, help Rabbi um, Asher uh, to, to lighten the menorah. So, so we, we did it in Tewksbury. We did it in uh, Andover. Yep. Like yep. He's doing it all over uh, in, in the north in the Merrimack Valley. Well, I want to invite you to North Andover when we, when we light the menorah this year. Usually, okay. I, I usually am at the North Andover one. And I've come to the Tewksbury one a couple of times, yep. but I will come again this year. Um, and uh, and please tell your wife that we said hello. Does she agree with you on all this Ukrainian stuff, or do you guys fight about it? Pretty much. We don't fight. Oh, no. really? Okay, all right. Because, you know, it's a marriage. You never know, right? You never, never know. So uh, if you need a dentist, you need uh, implants, you need uh, cleaning or whatever, go to M at MGS Dental. Um, it's mgs.dental online. There's no .com on that. Uh, and they're in Tewksbury. We appreciate that. You can roll up mail. We'll thank our sponsors. Okay. Get five what about Lisa? Here. We had a reminder for Lisa. I wrote it down. Oh, okay. So I gave you guys our breaking news story that the Valley Patriot 19th anniversary bash is March 31st. Mm -hmm. It's at the Relief Center in, in Lawrence where it always is and will always be if I have anything to say about it for my bash committee. Um, last night we had our first bash committee meeting for next year. And Lisa Williams from AFC Urge Care showed up. She saw that we had it online, that we were having a meeting. And she showed up to let us know that she's giving us $1,000 for our scholarships wow. for the Great Lawrence Vogue Scholarship recipient. And she's giving $1,000 to our Whittier Tech Scholarship recipient, which is great because I think, I think the girl that was at Whittier last year went into nursing. Oh. And she's going to be doing her internship at AFC Urgent Care when, when she gets to her intern part. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. So we, we want to thank Lisa Williams. Already into us for two thousand dollars for next March, which means hopefully we're we're, we're going to be we're going to be looking at maybe raising as much money as we did last year. Awesome. I don't know that we ever could. I, I don't even want to set that as a bar because wow. it's double what we normally give. But we gave forty two thousand dollars last year and we're already two thousand in. Want to thank McLennan Real Estate Century Twenty One. We're going to get Matt in here to talk about. Uh, I don't, maybe maybe before the election, depending on what happens with uh, house prices, but the home market is really starting to change a little bit, so we'll have him come in here and talk about real estate. Lazy River Products and Drake It, best cannabis in the Merrimack Valley. Marsan and Sun Construction, EIS Investigation, and Gun Training, where I, I, where I go. Borelli's Deli, where I go right after the show. Every Thursday, I go there for my hot sausages, and they've got great butternut squash ravioli that I always pick. I always pick up like two, two cartons of it because... Uh, it, one carton is not going to last me a week. Uh, Tomo and Shaken Seafood, Clear Path for Veterans, New England, MGS Dot Dental, AFC Urgent Care, Pleasant Valley Landscaping, and a free shout out to our buddies, the Jafrida Boys, at JG's Ice Cream. I'll be getting ice cream this weekend. I'm going to get like a hot fudge Sunday or something over there. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Dr. Gomer. And it sounds like Melvin Tail says you got to go home. So. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.